Hello. So I'm Alexandre Belloni. I will talk about the uh, Yocto project Auto Builders and the SWAT team. So first, uh, something about me. I'm the co-owner and COO at Bootlin. So Bootlin, very quickly, uh, we are doing embedded Linux. Uh, we are providing engineering services, uh, mostly doing BSP development on custom boards, um, things like that. We do, we port the kernel, we, we port bootloaders, drivers. Uh, we also do part of that um, uh, Yocto project, open embedded and build root integration. So that's where we are uh, relevant. And we also do real-time, boot time, and whatever, right? The other part of what we provide are uh, training services, uh, where we, we train companies, well, engineers, uh, on embedded Linux, uh, kernel drivers, and then uh, Yocto project, build root, and other topics, right? Uh, myself, I'm, um, I'm a kernel maintainer for the RTC and I3C subsystems. So I do, um, I actually, I, I used to do a lot of work on, on those topics. Uh, I still do ma maintain those. I'm also the co-maintainer for the microchip ARM and uh, MIPS uh, SOCs. So I, I kind of hum down uh, there, they, they are taking that back, but that's also something I, I used to do. And the other part is that I'm the Yocto project uh, SWAT team lead. So that's where I'm relevant for that topic, right? I'm living in Lyon, but whatever. So the, uh, <laughs> so the Yocto project auto builders. Um, so we, um, the auto builders, uh, this is coming from the Yocto project documentation. So basically we have a controller that is there to, to um, uh, manage the build requests and it will pull, uh, push those build requests to some workers, right? Actually, um, what we have is that the controller is one of the workers, right? But whatever. And um, on, on the side, we have a, a NAS. On that NAS, we do have the uh, shared um, state cache, uh, and that one is shared across all our workers, right? We also have a source mirror, so uh, GLDR, basically, where we, that one is also shared uh, by all the workers, right? So that's on a NAS, and all the workers are basically sharing the same um, location. We also handle the uh, hash equivalency uh, server, so we do have an hash equivalency server, so I will not, that will not be the topic uh, of today, uh, but basically this is very useful for us, uh, you will see that later on, because we have a, an heterogeneous um, uh, workers, so basically we are building on many different distributions, and um, that allows us to actually ensure we know um, what is the equ equivalency, right? So the ba basic is that um, the base hash is kind of different, and then we end up with the same binary, and so we, we can say, okay, so th even if the hash is different, we have the same binary, we have an equivalency there, right? Joshua, just over there, will know more about that than me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, basically, uh, the whole project is based on BuildBot. So, BuildBot has been chosen because it's um, a Python uh, continuous integration framework. So, uh, because it is Python, right? BitBake is Python. Um, so, the, the thinking there is say, okay, we, we have people that know Python in the project, so they will probably know how to uh, change a uh, billbot. We have then two different uh, repositories. The first one is Yocto Auto Builder 2, and that's the one that will list and define all the builders. And by builders, I mean an available type of build, right? So that's something you can then create a build from. Uh, and then we also have some uh, schedulers. I will go over there, them uh, later on. I, it is not a tutorial about how to set up that because it's actually easy, right? You have a readme. That readme, um, I mean, it's maybe it, it will take five to ten minutes to set up your own uh, auto builder um, and uh, workers. So it's very easy. I even managed to do it, so nobody, everybody can do it, right? Uh, and then you have more configuration, um, which is more interesting in our case, which is in um, Yocto Auto Builder Helper. 
it's a different repository. The main file there is config.json. And basically, that config will add more steps to the builders, right? So we have defined builders, but uh, we can actually uh, configure a bit more those builders um, through that config file, right? Uh, it is simply uh, called by the run config script, and that run config script is inside Yocto Auto Builder 2, and basically that's how we set up BuildBot. So there is a, a nice UI, and if I'm lucky, I can actually show that to you. So, yep, the UI looks like that. Um, so we are lucky we have a lot of green builds now, so that's good. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, it's at the console. Uh, each of the dots is a build, and green build is successful. Uh, yellow build uh, that is uh, pulsating is ongoing. Then we have uh, red that is uh, failed. We, do we have one? Yes, that one is failed. Uh, and then we have the pink one which have been canceled. So they are not really failed, but at the same time, they didn't really finish either. Right? So we have a bunch of those, like you can see. Uh, I didn't do a screenshot because we have like, um, yeah, well, I know we have 81 different builders, and we are building most of them, not all of them, but most of them uh, multiple times per day. Uh, yep. Let me get back there. Yep. So, uh, the workers. So, we currently have uh, 26 workers. So, you have their names uh, there. Um, it's not very interesting. But what is interesting is that uh, we are building for many different distributions. So, we have Alma Linux 8, uh, CentOS uh, 7, uh, Stream 8, Debian 11, Fedora 35 and 36, uh, OpenSUSE. Uh, Tumbleweed and Ubuntu 18.04, uh, Ubuntu 20.04, and uh, 21.10, and 22.04. So that really the goal there is to be able to uh, push builds to many different distributions and know where this is um, working, where this is failing. And we will see later on, I have some examples of, of very weird issues that did happen and that are not that um, easy to find. Sometimes it's very easy, right? Okay, there is a missing package or whatever package has changed name or something like that. Very easy to fix. You install the package, that's fixed, right? And sometimes you have some issues that are not that easy to, to find and to, 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 to really know, to pinpoint, okay, this is because that particular build is running on Tumbleweed something and things like that. Obviously, we are not running all the builds on all the di distribution all the time, right? The, um, we are scheduling those builds, and they are getting kind of randomly assigned to workers, right? So it's not always random because we have some builds that are Ubuntu specific, CentOS specific, uh, Fedora specific, but uh, apart from that, we are kind of randomly assigning uh, builds to workers. Those workers have two different architectures, so that's also uh, in a goal to, to make it um, build on many different uh, things. So we have two types of workers, so basically x86 and ARMv8, so ARC64. And the x86 workers, uh, most of them have um, 28 cores, so that means uh, 56 threads, so they are Intel Xeon E5. Uh, we have some that have less cores, so 24 cores, uh, 48 threads, and we even have two workers that have only, uh, well, only <laughs> 12 cores and uh, 24 threads, right? The amount of RAM goes from uh, 128 to uh, 384 uh, gigabytes, so that's not nothing, right? And so we then have two ARM workers, so one that uh, is a 64 cores, um, Cortex A72, uh, with 256 gigs of RAM and another one that has um, 32 cores and 128 gigs of RAM. So that's good. Uh, they are new ARM workers, so they are not yet in the pool, but we, I guess, ARM gave new workers, which is very nice from them. Um, and we, uh, we will put them in, in the pool soon. Right. So the main drawback of that is that it will create a fair amount of maintenance. Right? Because it's not like we have uh, something that is homogeneous and say, oh, okay, we just have to install those packages on that server and that will be it, right? Um, because all the workers are kind of different. Uh, we, it, it, it 
creates a lot of work. We will see that later on. Sometimes we have uh, issues with uh, permissions that are not the same, right? So, for example, on uh, Debian and Fedora, those, those will be the same, but on uh, Tumbleweed, they, they will have uh, different permissions for device files, uh, different uh, group names, or uh, user IDs, or things like that. And that creates uh, a fair amount of maintenance, because this is something you have to know. And those are the kind of things that also change when updating. Um, and some of them are uh, rolling releases. So we do update every Friday. So every Friday we have a maintenance um, that is scheduled, and we do update, and sometimes things are breaking, so uh, we need to, to fix those. Okay. We also have two workers that are specifically uh, reserved for build performance testing, and so that means that they will not get any work scheduled apart from the build performance testing. Right? Uh, something also to point out is that now about half of the workers are working from SSDs, uh, which did improve not only the performance, but also the reliability of our builds. I will talk about that later. It, it has been, for a few months, it has been a, quite an issue to, to actually manage to avoid uh, false positives because, um, well, things were getting slow and so builds were failing. So we'll see that. So, builders. What kind of builds can we do? So we have currently 81 different builders that are defined. I don't expect you to read uh, through all of them. I have um, uh, some information on that, right? So how do you know what is getting built by a particular builder? Well, basically, uh, most of the builders will build core image shadow, uh, which is a fairly large image. And they will do that using Pocky. And Pocky is kind of designed to, to, to be configured to build as much as possible. Right. The goal there, obviously, is to extend the build coverage as much as possible. Right? We want to build uh, the wall, uh, open and core, and Pocky, and things like that. So, else, you can have a look at the config.json, uh, where you will see exactly what a particular builder will do. So, we have that just there. Right? So, that's uh, QMU x86-64 for example, and that one we have a particular machine, so we will be building for the QMU x86-64 machine, and there is a template, right? On top of the template, we are appending new ImageFS types, but uh, what is interesting there is uh, the template, and the template uh, looks like that, right? So that was the uh, Arc QMU template that is there, and this is the definition of that Arc QMU template. So there, what do we say? Uh, basically, we enable build info, build history, uh, things like that. And then we have the targets we are going to build. Right? And you can see that right now, we will be building core image sato, core image sato SDK, core image minimal, core image minimal dev, and some others it doesn't fit <laughs> on the screen, but that's fine. And then we have sanity targets, which means what kind of tests do you want to run on those targets, so core image minimal, Test image, core image shadow, do test image. Right? So those are the kind of tests. And then you have that multiple times. So um, we can also build uh, later on, we build the SDK and the uh, X SDK. Um, and uh, we also run some uh, self test later on. Right? So, but yeah, again, just up to you to, to look at exactly what is done. I have a quick summary there. We have two parent builders, which are named AFUL and AQUIC. So A, because then alphabetically, in the alphabetical order, they are first in the list of uh, things that are getting built. It makes it, us e it's make, it makes it easy to, to select them in the console, right? So those were the first two columns. Uh, if I go back to the console, uh, so there uh, you have uh, AFUL, which is still building. So that's the uh, yellow one, and then AQUIC. So that's why it's A. And then we are full and quick. So basically, those are parent builders. When you ask for those builds, you are not actually building anything. You are just starting other builds. Right? And so on the uh, right of uh, a full, you have all the builds that have been uh, started by, uh, by a full. Right? And obviously, a full contains more builds than a quick. Right. The goal of a quick is to quickly test something. The goal of a full is really to validate that the current branch is uh, okay. Uh, sorry. 
So we also have uh, AUH for AUH for automatic upgrade helper, which tries to upgrade all the recipes to their latest upstream version. I can guarantee you that that one never uh, finished successfully, uh, but it's still useful because some of them are building fine, and then we have some failures. So we'll, we'll have a look at that. Basically, that one is scheduled every um, well on the first day of the month and on the 15th days of the month. Right. We then have machine-specific builders, uh, so those will be bu building the um, uh, images for the Yocto project members' machines. So uh, BeagleBone for TI, uh, Edge Router for, I guess it's for Cisco, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have uh, the Intel ones, so generic x86, x 64 We have those alt. Uh, when you see alt there, uh, it means that we are using uh, Pocky alt which basically uh, includes a system D instead of the uh, CIS-5 in it. Then we have QMU-based machine, which is very important because uh, by default, OpenOrbit Core only supports QMU-based uh, machine, and that allows us to actually run the images we are generating on QMU um, machines, right? So we, we will get to that. Then we have the uh, performance builders. Those are basically there to record the build time and other performance related metrics. So we are trying to uh, understand whether uh, a particular modification is um, well making the build uh, quicker, hopefully, but uh, quite often uh, the build will be a bit longer. So as soon as you add stuff, obviously uh, it gets more long. Uh, then you have documentation. So we are building the documentation. Uh, you, we also have, uh, include the Yocto project members uh, layers, so we check that. We also have uh, two targets, uh, so check layer and check layer nightly, which are checking whether the included layers are Yocto project compatible. So this is very important. I will not say what this is about, but yeah, basically we want to all the layers to, to be working well together. So this is something we can check. We then have a metrics, which is a pretty new builder. Uh, metrics will go and check um, CVEs for all the packages that it knows about, so uh, everything that is in Pocky basically will be checked against CVEs and it will report when we have uh, CVEs that are not fixed, right? So sometimes, so obviously we have that result and then it requires some manual work to know, okay, uh, we don't care uh, because we are not actually using what the CVE is about or um, then sometimes we, we will just uh, backport patches and in that case we have to tell CVE checks that that a patch has been backported, and so we are not affected by that CVE. We have p-test. I will come. Uh, will go um, to that uh, later on. Uh, so p-test is basically running tests on um, on the uh, actual image. Uh, we'll see what those are. We have LTP, so Linux Text Project. Um, so we are running LTP on those machines. Again, QMU emulated machines, but we we do run that. Um, then we have reproducible, which is ensuring that the generated packages are built bit for bit reproducible. Very important. So all, all the packages that are generated by uh, Open Embed Core are reproducible, fully reproducible, so, um, apart from uh, Golang and uh, RubyDocs. So we'll see that. Then we have WIC, uh, which is generating multiple disk images using WIC uh, just to test um, that. And then non-GPL3, which is building with incompatible license set to uh, anything that ends up with GPL v3, which is very useful for some um, companies when they want to avoid GPL v3. Right? So obviously this includes uh, meta GPL v2 to be able to access uh, all the necessary tools to be able to build. Right? with GPLv2 instead of GPLv3. So, uh, those were the builders. Now we have some schedulers. So, um, we have builds that are scheduled. Uh, any builder can be uh, triggered manually through the buildbot interface. So, if I go back to the interface, I can select, okay, that particular build. I can select the branches and send a new build to the auto builders. But we also have a quick that will run um, uh, every day of the week, uh, but not Sunday. It will uh, build master. Then we have a full that will also build master, but only on the Sundays. Then we have check, check layer nightly that will uh, check all the layers every uh, day. Metrics also runs every day. 
We also do a check layer nightly for Kirkstone and Dunfell. AUH, uh, like I said, will run twice a month, so on the 1st and 15th. And build performance will run tw uh, four times a day, so uh, 3 a.m., 9 a.m., 3 p.m., uh, 9 p.m., so that we actually can uh, make an average of what is happening, right? Obviously, uh, you may find a, a bit of variation um, when building only one build, but sometimes uh, this is actually uh, caused by uh, some external factors, right? Like, oh, okay, I didn't, uh, I, I had a slow internet connection at the time, right? So I, I couldn't download my uh, packages uh, that fast or things like that. And finally, we have docs, which will run on every commit. It is the only builder that will run on every commit that is pushed uh, to the uh, repository. So why? Because an a full build will take five to nine hours to, to complete, and it will load most of the workers. So meaning that for five to nine hours, all your workers will be uh, pretty loaded. And uh, it's then it's not very practical to start a build automatically for every commit that is made on master. And it is even less practical to do so on patches, right? Because the goal there then will be to test all the patches that are sent to the mailing list. Um, we don't do that, right? Because if it takes nine hours every time, um, we will run out of uh, resources quite fast, right? So uh, build testing will be a manual process, right? And this is where the kind of the uh, SWAT team uh, comes in. So this is what I do. Um, so Richard, uh, Richard Pordy used to do that uh, on his own, and this is something he managed to offload, so I'm doing that. Uh, I have also a colleague, so Luca, that is doing that, and for other branches, so we do that for master, uh, master next, and for the uh, stable branches, we have other people that uh, take care of that, so Steve Sakoman, for example, will take care of Dunfell and Kirkstone, which are the LTS uh, releases, right? So, the process starts by reviewing and collecting patches from the mailing list, right? We have multiple mailing lists because Pocky is composed of multiple projects, right? So we have BitBake, we have OpenOrbit Core, but we also then have uh, MetaYocto uh, that contains all the uh, Yocto project specific, so the definition of Pocky, for example. So you, we have two layers actually there. And we have Yocto docs, the documentation. Uh, from those patches that we, we did collect, so we do uh, a quick review on that, right? We are not testing all the patches that we can see, but we do a quick review, okay, the, the patch looks good. Um, we uh, create a new branch, so we apply those on the repositories. Then we uh, create a new Pocky branch using combo layer. So combo layer will basically take all those repositories and create a new repository, which is Pocky, from those repositories. It is not a very nice tool, so I will not talk, yeah, okay, I see. No, it is not a very nice tool, and honestly, it doesn't work very well, especially once you are multiple people working on the same branch. Uh, it's, it's helpful, but yeah, uh, this is not the topic there. Um, then we push that branch upstream, right? So I, I have uh, my branches are on Pocky Contrib, which is a Pocky uh, repository that is available, right? It's publicly available. Uh, you can have a look at it. At it. And then... I tell the auto builders to start an a full build on my, uh, my own branch, right? Um, that build runs, and if we have build failures, then um, the, hopefully I can find very quickly what, which patch did create that failure, right? Which usually should be the case because master is building just fine, master next is not building uh, properly, so probably I have a, a patch in there that is uh, making my build fail. So in that case, that's very easy. I remove the patch and uh, maybe uh, I will st collect other patches and things like that and until I have a st stable branch. Once my a full is successful, I provide my branch to uh, Richard. He will review, uh, do a final review of those uh, patches and he will merge um, everything in master. Right? That's the usual workflow. Um, yeah, okay, that slide should have come uh, before. So we have uh, self-test uh, builders, uh, which are running uh, BitBake self-test, right? Which is testing uh, BitBake and the API that includes the parser and fetchers. 
Uh, we have also OE self-test, which is um, a target that is keeping uh, the reproducible test because the reproducible test takes a lot of time, right? Most of the nine hours is actually because of the reproducible um, uh, build, because basically the reproducible build will build twice and then compare those builds, right? Um, it tests other things, so we, you have the list of what is tested there. Uh, honestly, it doesn't test enough, right? Uh, we'll see that. We need more tests. And it also runs uh, OE uh, PyLint. So uh, when PyLint 3 is available, uh, it will run that on the Python module, so uh, BitBake uh, and, and anything that is written in Python in uh, OpenOmid Core. Um, yeah, I'm missing, sorry, I'm, I'm missing a slide that was looking for, okay, no, no matter. Um, so, we also have other tests. Uh, so, we do test the SDK. So, we have two targets for that, uh, test SDK and test SDK X. Uh, they are basically doing the same thing, while the test SDK X is testing DevTool on top of the regular SDK. The tests are in, at that location, so this is in Open Embedded Core, so lib OEQA SDK. Uh, that assumes that the SDK environment is set up, which means that if you want to be able to run those tests on your own, you will have to first populate SDK and then run the uh, SDK environment script to be able to run those tests. Right. What do they test? Basically, whether you can actually generate uh, binaries for your target. Right. Um, the goal, okay, I have an ARM target, I want to be able to generate uh, ARM binaries uh, using, uh, using my SDK and not uh, MIPS binaries. For example. Uh, the auto builders don't have a board, board farm, right? Like I said, uh, we are building for machines, but we are not actually running those builds on actual machines. But we have a powerful server, so we can run QMU, and we do run the QMU images on the uh, workers. And so uh, we have the test image task that you can actually uh, run on your own if you want. Uh, it runs um, run QMU. It will boot uh, the generated ker kernel using that root file system, and uh, it will test uh, many things. Right? Um, which makes it also uh, part of why this is so difficult to get workers uh, working inside the auto builder uh, farm, because uh, to be able to uh, use run QMU, you also have to have uh, tune tap interfaces, uh, things like that, that run QMU will look for. So this is also. Uh, yet another complexity uh, in, in the maintenance uh, for those workers. So uh, I said that we have the LTP builders that will run LTP inside uh, that image, right? So it will install LTP on the root file system and run that uh, in that uh, in QMU. Then we have the p-tests, and what are the p-tests? Well, the p-tests are basically uh, package tests, right? And those are tests that are coming with the packages, so with the upstream release. So we get the tests, uh, the unit tests from upstream, and we run uh, those tests. And as you can see, we have uh, OpenSSL, uh, glibc, LTTNG, uh, Python 3. Um, they all have tests, and we are running uh, those tests. So you have the full list of tests that are run in uh, that include file. So uh, in metaconf distro include ptest package list dot inc. Uh, and also, also again, on your own, in your own layer, nothing prevents you from adding your own p-test, right? It is very easy to do. Um, if you want to ensure um, in your CI that uh, what you do is still working, you, you can provide your own p-test. And then reproducible, like I said, it will do two builds. The first build is allowed to reuse the shared state cache because then it, it will go quite faster. But the second one is not allowed because we actually want to rebuild uh, those binaries, right, from scratch. So uh, we do that, then the both outputs are compared, and all the uh, package types are tested. So we, for those two builds, we are actually building all the type of packages we can, so IPK, Debian, and RPM. So that generates a huge amount of uh, packages. And uh, we have the failures um, that will be, um, uh, so when we have failures, we uh, actually upload those failures uh, at that location, so repro fail, 
Um, and we even have the default scope output and things like that. We even have the binaries. So if you need to still compare the binaries, you can also do so. Right. And uh, we have those results, uh, which are at uh, yuktoproject.org slash reproducible build results. And um, those results are actually uh, quite nice because, as I said, well, 100% of the packages uh, that are tested are reproducible. And the only ones that are not tested are Golang, but this is an upstream issue, and RubyDoc, uh, this is documentation. Uh, and it's also an upstream issue. It's basically it's basically um, uh, the RubyDoc uh, generator is reordering some sections, uh, and it does so randomly, so it's di very difficult to fix without knowing how RubyDoc is working. But, well, this is what it is. Right. So uh, what are the saved results uh, from the auto builders? The uh, standard output is saved. So you always have access to the standard output. Actually, if I go to the console, right, and I go, uh, I click on one build. So that one was one of the failed build. It will uh, show me uh, right now, OK, I have the uh, standard output of that build. So this is what failed. So that one is quite short, so that's nice. But you can see this is basically the output of BitBake. Right? So if you, if you know how to read the output of BitBake, well, it is there. We also have the uh, shared state, obviously. It goes to the, uh, to the NAS. We also have hash equivalency, like I said. So that one is also exported. So you have actually access to it if you want. So uh, on uh, typhoon.yocto.io at that port, so 86, 87. We also have the build history that is pushed. So if you want to uh, look at the uh, auto builder's uh, build history, you have access to that. So I don't know if you all know what is build history, but basically that will record the difference between your current build and your previous build. And it does so in a, in a Git repository. And so every commit is a separate build. And so that allows you to, to know what uh, is different. We also have test results. Those test results include the results of LTP and p-test. Uh, we have the build statistics. So those are the ones coming from the performance uh, test build. And I guess I can show you what we do. Uh, nope, I don't have that. Let me get that from somewhere. That will be the one. Nope, that's the one, right? So those are build statistics. And we actually generate nice graphs uh, so that the, uh, basically the build time is there. Uh, and uh, so we don't record the actual version, but that's the number of commits since uh, the first commit on master. And we, we have a look. So, um, so that it's not, yeah, it's about one minute uh, difference between the previous uh, uh, 16 runs. So that's not that bad. Um, then we have the uh, size of TMP deer, uh, the root FS size, the build time uh, for uh, different images. Um, and uh, we also have the do root FS time. So whether we take more time to uh, generate the root file system from packages. So that's also a very good uh, information. So it's quite stable right now uh, on that particular build, uh, which is uh, nice. Right? Um, and uh, those, those are also available on that uh, particular uh, address. So that's autobuilders.io slash pub slash non-release or slash release, depending on whether you are interested in a release build. So for example, if, if you are interested in 4.0.0, you could go to release. But if you are interested in the uh, master build, you can go in pub slash uh, non-release. And uh, you will find uh, basically all your builds with what happened, right? So you get the performance report. You get the p-test logs, uh, build history. You also have all the failures that are recorded and things like that. A lot of data is uh, recorded, and we'll see that it's not actually enough. Uh, so yeah, oh, OK. That was the PTERF output I just showed you. So if you want to look at it, the URL is there. So finally, uh, I come to the uh, SWAT team. So basically, the SWAT team looks at all those build failures. And like I said, sometimes it's very easy. Um, OK, the build failure is caused by a patch. You remove the patch, you have removed, removed that build failure. That's nice. But it's not always the case, because um, quite often um, we have, um, 
what we call the uh, intermittent uh, issues, uh, so the AB int issues, so that will be uh, that case there. And, oop, uh, and in that case, uh, we need to, um, yeah. We need to um, to track those, right? And uh, uh, preferably, we want to solve those too. So, um, uh, what kind of issues did we have? Uh, I, we do track uh, 230 uh, uh, issues that have been closed. So, what kind of issues did we have? So, those are all the intermittent issues, so not caused by a particular patch. Some of them are caused by the infrastructure. So, for example, you have that issue, so that was basically uh, virtual uh, not running, and it was a permission issue, right? So, if you look at uh, bug number uh, 14551, you will see that basically um, on OpenSUSE, uh, they change a particular device from one group to another, and the builder was not in that group, and so at the time, um, yeah, that group doesn't exist on Fedora, for example. And so, we had to add that to the OpenSUSE uh, setup. We also have, um, we also find issues uh, that are present upstream. So that's one of those issues. So there is a Perl install race. Uh, so basically, uh, pod 2 text was used, well, was installed before be ge getting compiled, which is very weird. We had a look at the makefile. It was very difficult to find a race condition there. Actually, there are no con race conditions in the makefile itself. But make had an issue. In that case, it's because make, uh, it was make uh, 4.1, it had an issue, and make 4.1 was shipped on Ubuntu uh, 16.04 and 18.04. So that one will take a lot of time to, to find out, right? Because it will mostly work, and sometimes when that build runs on Ubuntu uh, 16.04 or 18.04, it will fail. But it will not always fail, right? So I gather some statistics. So I'm responsible for that. I, I'm gathering those statistics, and I'm trying to find, okay, um, um, uh, this only happened on Ubuntu. What is the commonalities between those two Ubuntu uh, releases and things like that, right? So that's how we, we find out. We found out. We also had kind of the same thing. It's sometimes the build would hang, right? And this was caused by uh, make um, uh, 4.2.1 that was shipped by CentOS, Alma, uh, Linux Stream, and OpenSUSE. Uh, we did uh, report that bug upstream to uh, CentOS. They, did, they said, OK, you are doing weird things with Make or whatever, but no, we are just compiling the kernel. So uh, they wanted us to report that to Fedora, but basically Fedora, um, well, to Red Hat, but basically uh, Red Hat didn't care too much because they already moved out uh, Make for the 2.1. So basically, the um, solution was to disallow uh, make for the 2.1. Uh, that one is also painful to find, uh, to find out. For a while, like I said, we had a lot of performance-related issues um, because multiple builds are allowed to run on each worker. Right? So you may have multiple big days running in parallel in the same on the same worker, and that will increase the load. And what we found out is that sometimes we had uh, RCU stalls on the kernel when it's running in QMU. Why? Because basically we were compiling, I don't know, uh, WebKit or Node.js or something really load intensive. And um, QMU didn't have any uh, cycle to make the virtual machine go forward. And so basically the kernel that is running inside QMU will, was just, you know, bailing out, oh, okay, it's been uh, 20 seconds that I didn't run, let's crash. So how do we solve that? Uh, now we have the uh, make, we are using the make load awareness. Um, so we are, uh, that is dash L, that is just there, so dash L52. Uh, so if we go uh, higher than a, a load of 52 on the, um, on the builder, uh, on the worker, we will stop, uh, well, make will automatically stop and queuing uh, more work. Uh, we also did lower the limits for XZ. So the, those settings are specific to the uh, Yocto Project Auto Builder. They are different from the uh, current default uh, for Open Embedded Core. But that, that, those may be useful for your own uh, CI, right? And so for XZ, we also limit it to A threads uh, with a maximum of 5% of memory, right? Because XZ, when it's, compa it's compressing, it takes a huge amount of memory, and it was also um, starving other processes. 
We are also uh, copying uh, the uh, rootfs image to uh, tmpfs so that uh, we can avoid IOs uh, when running uh, QMU. And finally, the workers have be, are getting switched to SSDs, which did also improve the rel reliability of those builds. Uh, finally, yep, <laughs> I'm out, or, yeah, really out? Uh -huh. So I'm out of time, uh, just very quickly, just my last slide. Um, what needs to be worked on, and that's where we need your help, uh, we need better logging, because sometimes it's very difficult to pinpoint what the issue is because we don't have the logs. Or, because we are building so much, we do remove the build uh, directories, right? And uh, sometimes it's too late to go there and fetch the logs we are interested in. So we need to uh, improve that and particularly collect the relevant output when it's failing. Um, so if you are up for some development, uh, you could do that. Uh, we also need better p-tests and uh, better o OE self-tests. Right? Uh, so p-test is useful for everyone because, again, the p-tests are unit tests from the upstream uh, packages. So you actually contribute to upstream, right? which will actually improve also uh, the Yocto project. And finally, some tests will benefit from being more robust and especially less timing dependent because, again, we are loading those workers so much that sometimes uh, it just fails because something times out. And it's not actually a failure, right? It's just, oh, okay, it times it out. And also, I'm also timing out, so uh, I will take the questions, I guess, yeah, I will take the questions uh, off stage.